everything that an altar server or any type of minister during the mass does says either this is very 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 important or this is not that important. If I'm slouching in my pew, if I have my hands on my hips, if I'm looking up at the ceiling or I'm wandering around in my thoughts, if I have my hands and I'm fidgeting and I'm and I'm just doing all sorts of things, these are things that indirectly, even though we might not be meaning to say it, with our body we are saying this is not important. So I'm going to give you very specifics, very simple. And all of these things, you don't have to be an altar server to do them. You can be an altar server not even assisting at the Mass and still do them in your pew. And we will start with our hands. The first thing is if you're an altar server standing up during the Mass, you should have your hands in prayer position. At an angle, you have both of your hands pressed together, your right thumb over your left thumb, and your fingers pointing in this direction. And this is for a few reasons. One, the most obvious is if my hands are here, I'm not fidgeting. This gives me somewhere where I can focus. My hands should be at this position at all times when I'm standing or when I'm kneeling during the Mass and I'm not holding anything, my hands in prayer position. Another reason we have this ha hands in prayer position is that I'm pointing at you. If I'm pointing at you like this, I'm saying you, and you're saying me, and if I point like, if I point like this, you, yes, you, I'm pointing at you with two fingers. It's more, if I'm just going like this, that's one thing. If I'm going, yeah, you, buddy. And if I'm going like this, yeah, can I point any more fingers at you? You, man, I'm talking to you, right? So I am have my hands in prayer position. I am saying with my very body, I'm directing all my attention towards the action at hand. And not only at the action at hand, but slightly upwards. I'm lifting my mind and my heart to God. All the saints, we see them in statues in prayer position. Why? Because there's something intrinsic about our postures that impacts our souls. Saint Dominic has the nine postures of prayer. And in, in the liturgy, we see that the priest assume many different postures. And all of these postures impact the type of prayer that we are expressing. And so if I have my hands in prayer position and somebody's distracted, or I might be distracted, and I, I have my hands here and people look at me, well guess what? I'm directing all of my attention. Everybody should be directing all their minds and their hearts to God. And so I'm pointing right where we should be facing. And I have my hands in prayer position. What else does this mean? That means that my, my heart, my heart is physically here and I'm directing my heart towards the main liturgical action. I'm directing my heart towards the, the sacred liturgy. There's a second posture, something that we do with our hands. When we're sitting, we should be sitting flat on our bottom, sitting up straight, not leaning back. What, this is so rigid, just trust me. Are we trying to give the most reverence? Are we trying to be as sober as possible to show that what we are doing is something that we are engaged in? We're not relaxed and nonchalant. Okay, so just take my word for it. Trust me, hear me out, and we'll talk more about the reasons and the whys and all this stuff later, okay? So we, we're, when we're sitting, we're sitting up straight with our back straight and our hands. What are we doing with our hands? Are we fidgeting? No. Where do you have your hands? You have your hands palms down on your knees, sitting up very royally, almost as if you're a king and you're sitting up very soberly. Why? Because what, what's happening, we are taking place in the heavenly banquet. You are in the presence of the king of kings. Why not sit as if you were a king? And also, again, your fingers on your palms facing forward. Why? Again, I'm pointing at you. I'm pointing at what's going on. I'm pointing about the main liturgical action. I have my hands here. Yes, it keeps me from fidgeting, but also it reminds me of what's going on and my posture of sitting up straight and very sober, not leaning back in my chair. This helps to foster a sense of reverence. Trust me, by being a, a reverent altar server, you directly impact the dispositions of those people in the pews. This is why it's such a tragedy when people go to Mass and they see altar servers, one, who don't want to be there, two, who have no idea what's going on or that they're, what they're doing is even important, or three, they think that they're there as some part of a show or some sort of a play to look cute for their family and their friends. No, what you are doing is very important and it is a great honor and also a great responsibility. So when we're standing, we have our hands in prayer position. When we are kneeling, we have our hands in prayer position. When we are sitting, we are sitting straight up with our backs not leaning up against the back of the pew, with our hands flat on our palms with our fingers pointing forward. Let's say, for example, you're carrying something. When I have one hand holding something, I put my free hand on my chest. So if I'm holding this cruet, I would hold it in my right hand and I'd put my free hand on my chest. If I am about to dip my fingers into the holy water, I'd put one hand on my chest and the other hand I would dip into the water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and I'd bring my hands back together in prayer position. And then finally, when we're handing something to the priest, we hand it, if we're handing a cruet to him, we hand it with the handle out and we hand it to him with our right hand. So I hand him this, I hand him the wine. I have no priest here, so I'll put the wine on the uh, this cruet on the table. And then whatever's in my left hand, I switch it now to my right hand. 
and then I receive something back from my left hand, I give him this with my right hand, and then I pass it over. And then I receive this with my left hand. So give it with the right, whatever's in your left hand, move it to your right hand, receive it with the left. That's it, this is very simple. That brings me to the next point, fraternal correction. It is, we're human. We're weak. We hear the parab we hear the, the story from the gospel where Jesus says, you know, before you pick out the splinter in your neighbor's eye, pull out the beam from your own eye. Well, how blessed are we to have neighbors who can see the splinter in our eyes? So if you're an altar server, there's fraternal correction done out of brotherly love. So if you're an altar server, it is your responsibility to remind your brother altar server that if you see that their hands are down or they have their hands in their pockets, just give them a little elbow and give them a little bit of correction. That goes a long way. We're all human, we all forget, and just say, I do this all the time, especially if you're an older server, do it with the younger ones, because you're their role model, you're their example. So we have how our postures and our hands should be used during the Mass. My hands are here together, when I have nothing in my hands. When I'm sitting, I have my hands face down, palms on my knees. I'm sitting up straight, I'm not leaning back. Where should your eyes be? Your eyes should be directed at the main liturgical action. It is very distracting for a member of the congregation to have somebody looking at them. So don't look at them. Your eyes with your entire body, not just with your fingers, should be directed at the main liturgical action so that we can assist other people in their worship and love of God. If they get distracted, they look at us, where are we looking? We're looking where they should be looking. Will they look at us, where and what are we doing? Our fingers are pointing at the main liturgical action so they can know where they should be focusing, right? So if you don't know where to look, look at the priest or at the altar. If you're carrying the sacramentary and the priest is reading from it, where should you look? You look at the priest's heart. If you're holding the incense and you're behind whoever's doing the, the gospel reading, where should you look? Look at that person's heart. It's very easy for you to want to look around at all the faces that are in the congregation. Don't do this. It's distracting. Act like you're engaged in the Mass, even if you're not. If your body is acting like it will, it will be more easy and more consistent for your soul to follow. Our bodies impact our dispositions. These are all very important. So the fourth point that I will make is the way you dress. We often hear, it doesn't matter how you're dressed. Go to Mass, all that matters is that you're at Mass. Yes, it matters that you're at Mass. But if the Mass is important, you should dress like it's important. Why? Because it impacts your disposition. It impacts the disposition of other people. We say this is this holy sacrifice of the Mass. We say that heaven touches earth here, and then we come here wearing our tennis shoes and our ripped jeans. I'm not saying that you have to be dressed in dress pants every time you come to Mass. I'm saying, if you are an altar server, you, because you are so intimately involved, should be wearing black dress pants, black dress shoes, black dress socks, and they show to everybody and importantly to yourself that what's going on here is important. And so I am dressed up. I'm not dressed like I dressed all the time, even though you might be dressed like this all the time. You are dressed in a way consistent with what we say is the dignity. If you could dress any better, you probably would. But this is what we wear when we are altar servers. And again, when you are getting dressed, you should unbutton your collar and fold it underneath so that none of your street clothes is showing beneath your altar server garments. And then I would like to add one thing to our first point, and that is our hands. During the Our Father, altar servers should not be holding hands. Why? Because that is not the prescribed posture from the church. Nowhere in any liturgical books anywhere does it say, during the Our Father, the congregation shall hold hands. Why? Again, because our bodies impact our disposition. There's a saying in the church, a Latin axiom that's lex orandi, lex credendi, and then it goes on lex vivendi. Lex, lex orandi, lex credendi. The law of prayer is the law of faith, which, it, which is the law of life. So. What you pray impacts what you believe. So what we pray, we don't just say the words, Our Father. We also pray with our body. So by my changing my posture to one of holding hands, I am changing the meaning of this prayer because now I'm making it about all of us together. When the church hasn't said this is about something where we should all hold hands. The Mass is meant and intended to be 
all about God. And so the reason we do all the things that we do in the Mass is because of God and we want to give God attention and we want to give God reverence. Whenever we focus too much on each other and what this person is doing and what that person is doing, we tend to lose sight of why we're really in church. So I'm not telling you to be critical of other people and their behavior, but I want you to be well aware that what you do impacts other people. And so you might be at a church where the priest or the deacon might not be as reverent as you like. They might be distracted. They might have their heart and their mind somewhere else. You can't judge them you don't know what's going in to the in their going on in their hearts, but you can do something. What can you do? You yourself can be reverent. If we are impacted by each other's actions, being a reverent altar server will impact your priest, will impact your deacon. They might wonder why is he act why is this kid so reverent? Well, because and, and then the thought will come, the Holy Spirit will work and they'll say, because this is important. And when they see the young people being acting like this is reverent and this is important, then they too will start to reflect that action. If you're acting reverent and you're very confident in your reverence, other people will start to pick up on it and will start to copy you just because they feel like, and it, because we have a sense of the faith, we know that how we should be acting, we should be acting reverent, but nobody's told us. So I'm telling you right now, in church, if you're an altar server, have prayer hands, your, your two hands together, your right thumb over your left thumb. If you're kneeling, the same position, it helps you to pray. It might not be the most comfortable position, but I promise you that it assists in your prayer. It helps to direct your mind and your heart to God, and it works, I promise. When you're sitting down, sit up straight. The whole point is not that you look cute. The whole point is that we assist in giving reverence and adoration and worship of God. God bless you and God love you. Take care.